Hey, it's Nathan with crazyadmarketing.com. In this video, we're gonna look at the various ad set settings in the Facebook or Meta Ads Manager. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So I'm just gonna go, go ahead and create a brand new campaign real quick and then get to the ad set level so we can address some of the settings. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the sales campaign objective. Now I have a whole other video all about campaign objectives and how they relate to the ad set settings. And I recommend watching that video first, so link in the description if you need to learn about the campaign objectives, but I'm going with sales in this video. We'll click on continue. And then it wants me to choose the campaign setup. So we have Advantage Plus Shopping Campaign, and we also have Manual, manual Sales Campaign. I wanna select this option for this video as it lets us adjust the ad set settings. And I have a whole other video on the Advantage Plus option. So if you wanna learn more about that, link in the description down below. Anyway, we'll go ahead and click on continue now. And so we're at the campaign settings. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this use catalog option because using a catalog changes my ad set settings and I don't want to change them. I want to leave them wide open. So I'm just turning that off and that's it for the campaign settings for this particular video. We wanna to get to the ad set level. So here we are in the ad set level. And the first thing we have is to name our ad set right here. So you could go ahead and name it something so you can keep everything straight. Now you can also create a template for your ad set name so that way you keep things consistent because if you're anything like me, you might have a certain pattern at one point in time and then a few weeks later you come in and you have a different pattern. You forget how you set everything up. So if you create a template, it can help keep you straight in your naming conventions. So I'm gonna go ahead and click template here and you can see that I already have a template created, but let's say that I didn't. So we'll come here to edit template real quick and we can edit a template. And so I have ad set name, which is what we're on right here. So for my template, I'm gonna go ahead and create and we can go ahead and add components to our template. And there's some that are automatic. So you could go ahead and name them after after like the advantage campaign budget or objective or campaign ID or campaign name, or here's ad set field. So yeah, several targeting options or interests and things like that. So this will automatically update based off of the options you select when you're setting up your ad set. So that can be useful to keep things automated. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is use an open text field. So I'll click this option here and then we go ahead and edit this option. And then I usually do product. So each ad set is for a particular product and I'll click on check mark. And then I'll add another option here and open text field and edit. And then I'll say audience and check. And then I'll add another option and open text field and edit it and placements and check. So this helps me remember that I like to have my product first and then my audience that I'm gonna be advertising to second and then where I'm actually placing my ads third. And it just helps me keep everything straight and organized. We can go ahead and change our field separator. So you can see we have product underscore audience underscore placements, but you could go ahead and change it to one of these characters if you'd rather it be something different. I'll just leave it the underscore. And we also have item separator, which would be used if we were doing the automated one. So if I use like a ad set option here and interests, it would separate the different interests by this item separator right here. And for the sake of example, I'll go ahead and just leave interest here just so you can see how it all works. So we'll go ahead and click on save and then I can go ahead and close out here and I'll go ahead and turn my template off and back on. And it gives me these fields to go ahead and fill out. So I'll do say on old book and my audience would be my lookalike audience. And then my placements will be news feed. And you can see how it formats my ad set name. So coming on down here, we have catalog sales. And again, I'm not going for catalog sales. Let me go back to the campaign and turn that off and come back over here. So we have different conversion options right here. And I address all these conversion options in my campaign settings video because each campaign objective has different conversion options or events that you're trying to optimize for. Since I'm on a sales campaign objective, it's letting me select different conversion locations to help me generate sales. And in this case, I'm gonna be driving people to my website. So I'll select that option right here. We have performance goal, which I also address in the campaign settings video. So check that out if you haven't already. And I'll just leave this as a default. Make sure my pixel is selected, my conversion event. I'll go ahead and scroll down here to purchase and select this option right here. Now it's saying that I haven't had any conversion events in 14 days. So are, am I sure that I want to do purchase events? And so yes, I do. I'm aware that my purchase event hasn't fired because I haven't set it up yet. And so basically it's just trying to make sure that you know that no purchase events have fired. And if you think some have, well then you have an issue that you should probably troubleshoot before you go ahead and you launch this campaign. Moving on, we have cost per result goal. And so this sounds like a good option to have. Like if I know that I need to sell my books for $10 or less then plugging $10 in here kind of sounds like a good idea. So that way any results that I get will be under this $10 limit. Now the issue is with the brand new campaign or ad set, 
It can take a little bit of time for Facebook to optimize that to get you the best results. And so if you're limiting your budget to $10, well, you might not get any conversions at all. Whereas if you leave this wide open, yeah, the first few might be like $20 and then $18 and then $15. And then it slowly works its way down until you're getting conversions at a cost that you can afford. But if you restrict Facebook ahead of time by pulling in a value right here, well, then your ad set and ads might not deliver at all. So I usually turn this off and we see how Facebook performs. And if it doesn't get the conversions down low enough after spending X amount of dollars over Y amount of days, well, then I can go ahead and adjust things. So my recommendation for this, even though it sounds good, is to leave it turned off because when things start off, it probably will be more expensive until it optimizes. But you don't want to cut yourself off at the knees before you even get started. So recommendation is to leave this turned off. We have show more options right here. So there's attribution settings and you can read the details right here. But basically it's a length of time between a conversion event and an action. So in this case, it's seven days from clicking on an ad. If somebody takes the action within those seven days, so they buy my book within seven days, well, that conversion will be attributed to this particular ad. Or if they view my ad within one day, but they don't click on it, but they still manage to find my website and buy my product, well, then that'll still count as a conversion for the ad. And I usually just leave it on the default set settings as I don't really want to mess up Facebook's algorithm or anything like that. So this is fine in my opinion. And then when you get charge and delivery type, you can't change, at least not with the sales campaign objective. And I wouldn't change them anyway. They're fine just like they are. So dynamic creative is quite powerful. It lets you provide creative elements such as images and headlines and Facebook will automatically generate combinations optimized for your audience. Variations may include different formats, templates, or audio based on one or more element. So basically when you're creating your ad, you'll be able to upload a bunch of different images or videos and different headlines and descriptions and things like that. So you'd create multiple different options down here and Facebook would use their algorithm to select what would work best for each individual person, or at least that's the theory. And so this gives a lot of control up to Facebook, which you may or may not want. Now, I think it can be a good idea to have an ad set that uses dynamic creative. And then you have another ad set that does not use dynamic creative and you see which one performs the best. So this is basically one of those all powerful options where you would want to split test an entire ad set to see if it works better using this feature or not. And so for my case right here, I'm just going to leave it turned off. Now we have budget and schedule. So there's a couple different options here. We have daily budget, which means that you'll spend about $20 per day. And you can see a description right here. You'll spend an average $20 per day. Your maximum daily spend is $25 and your maximum weekly spend is 140. And why you might spend upwards of $25 in a day is because over time, Facebook might realize like, hey, on Wednesdays, you tend to get more sales. So we're gonna spend more money on Wednesday. Whereas on Sunday, you tend to get less sales. So we might only spend $20 or $15 on Sunday. So that we can get more conversions for spending less money. And then there's also a lifetime budget. So if you know you're gonna be running a campaign for 14 days or something like that, like you have a super mega sale and you're going to be pushing it hard for 14 days, I recommend doing a lifetime budget because then Facebook knows I have $350 in 14 days to figure out how to get you the most conversions for the least amount of money. And so if you have a set date where you're going to stop advertising that particular offer, then lifetime budget is probably the best choice. However, any other time where you might have the campaign going on for a long period of time, daily budget is the best option. And you can see down here, we have start date and end date. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the end date because we're using the daily budget option. But if you're doing lifetime, of course, you'd probably wanna set an end date for whenever your special offer ended. And that way Facebook knows you're gonna stop advertising on that date. But I'm leaving it daily budget and turn off the end date. Coming on down here, we have budget scheduling. And so this lets you decide if you want to manually increase or decrease your budget on different days or times. And the only time I ever do ad scheduling is if I'm advertising for a brick and mortar business that has store hours and my advertising efforts are for them to like call the store or visit the store, then I think it makes some sense to have some ad scheduling. However, if you're doing something digital or online that's 24 seven, 365, then I don't see any point in doing this budget scheduling because Facebook's algorithm is going to figure out the best times and days to show ads to people to get those inversions for the least amount of money as possible. So if you don't need to restrict your advertising windows, I don't think you should because again, the algorithm will take care of it. However, if you're advertising because you're only open for 10 hours a day or whatever it is, then it makes sense to do some of this scheduling. But just for the sake of example, we can go ahead and click on try budget scheduling. And you can see that you select the day, the time and increase daily budget amount value by this amount, or you could also do it by a percentage as well. So pretty self-explanatory. Should you wanna go ahead and increase your budget or do some scheduling? 
Coming on down here, we have audience controls. So we can set criteria for where ads for this campaign can be delivered. So we'll click show more options here. And in my saved audiences video, I go over a lot of details over the audience control, as well as the demographics, behaviors, and interests you can select with your audiences. So I recommend checking out that video. Again, it's the saved audiences video, link in the description down below. But just real quick, so of course, you wanna make sure that you're in a location that makes sense for you and your business, so wherever your customers are located, and you could go ahead and select an entire country, or you could select a zip code, or a state, or whatever makes sense. You could also exclude different locations as well. So we could go ahead and have all United States, excluding Florida, and so on. We have age down here, so minimum age, you could go ahead and change that. So if you know your customers need to be at least 21 because it's alcohol or something like that, you could go ahead and select this option. You could also go ahead and exclude custom audiences. Like let's say that we don't want to include any leads in this advertising effort. We also don't want to include anybody that has watched my videos or my website visitors, because we're gonna be using these audiences for retargeting. So they're already gonna be seeing ads from one of my retargeting campaigns, and we don't need to show them ads from this campaign as well. So that's why we'll go ahead and exclude those audiences. And then of course we have languages as well, and you can select the language that makes sense, or you know if you're targeting the United States, probably most people speak English, so it should be fine to just leave all languages. And now we have Advantage Plus Audience. So here, our ad technology automatically finds your audience if you share an audience suggestion, we'll prioritize audiences matching this profile before searching more widely. So what Facebook really wants you to do is actually go as broad as possible, and they're gonna use their algorithm to read your ad, read your landing page, understand what you're trying to offer and sell, and then it's going to connect your ad landing page offer with their entire database of users based off of their interests, behaviors, and de demographics. So Facebook would automatically do all this stuff for you and optimize for you. And that's really what they're trying to push right now. Now, if you wanna kinda of give Facebook a hint of what people might be interested in or behaviors people might partake in, you can go ahead and suggest things to Facebook by selecting audience suggestions. And so here you could go ahead and select different custom audiences that you may have made. So I could go ahead and select like my lookalike audience right here because that's what I would like them to go ahead and use or I could get into more detailed targeting options and select different demographics, interests, or behaviors. And so maybe I'll, I would add in small business and I might select small business owners right here. If it makes sense to do something like that. And again, I recommend watching my saved audiences video because I go into much more details and all these audience options right here. But just remember when you're using the Advantage Plus audience, this is just a suggestion to Facebook. Facebook's not necessarily going to follow exactly what you have right here. And so if you wanna have more control, you can come down here and you can switch to original audience options. So it tries to talk you out of it, saying that Advantage Plus audience usually gets up to 33% lower cost per result. So this could be another option to go ahead and test. You could test an Advantage Plus audience versus one that you manually select and see which one performs better. But for demonstration, we'll go ahead and use original audience right here. And we could go ahead and scroll on down. And now all these settings are like set in stone. They're not just suggestions. They're actually going to be followed by Facebook. And let's continue moving on down to placements here. So we have two different options for placements. So we have Advantage plus placements, similar to Advantage plus audience. And in this case, use Advantage plus placements to maximize your budget and help show your ads to more people. Facebook delivery system will allocate your ad sets budget across multiple placements based on where they're likely to perform best. And so this is letting Facebook control where your ads will show up. So it might show up on Facebook or Instagram or in the news feed or on the sidebar or in their audience network or in Messenger. So your ads could show up like anywhere within the Facebook or Meta ecosystem. Now Facebook's going to work to optimize to show your ads only where they convert, but they could spend a whole lot of money on places that just aren't gonna perform or your customers aren't even at. So it's kind of given a lot of control over to Facebook, but also it might reveal some different opportunities and placements that you might not have considered or that you might not have thought would actually have worked. So there are some pros and cons to it and can definitely be worth testing out. But then there's also manual placements. So let's open this real quick. And so here you can go ahead and select where you want your ads to show. So audience network usually tends to be a bust. And so personally, I usually turn that off. And then I might leave these other platforms selected. Again, Facebook will optimize my ads for me. So if Messenger is not performing, it will push ads to Facebook or Instagram over Messenger. But Messenger usually doesn't perform very well either. But anyway, moving on down here, we have different asset customizations and placements. So feed, of course, is right in the middle of Facebook or Instagram. And of course, that's where the prime real estate is. And it usually costs more money to run ads right there in the feed. 
However, they tend to perform better. But it's also a balancing act, right? Like if you can get a thousand impressions on the sidebar for a dollar and you get one conversion per thousand impressions, and that might be cheaper than being in the feed where it takes a hundred impressions to get one conversion, but it costs $15 to get those hundred impressions. And that would be pretty expensive for a hundred impressions, but I think you get the idea. Some places are more expensive, but usually perform better, whereas some places are cheaper and usually perform not as well, but they might be cheap enough that even though they don't perform like like super well, they're cheap enough that it makes up for it. So anyway, you can go through here and you can select where you want your ads to show. So we have the different placements and so feeds right here, you can click on this little arrow and it lists out all the different feeds that your ads will show in. And I usually leave most of them selected unless I have a reason for turning them off. And usually that reason is because I don't have an ad for that specific placement. Like you can see over here on the right hand side, it'll show you the dimensions of the image or video that'll be used in that particular placement. So if I don't have an ad that's horizontal at 1.91 to one ratio, well then I would go ahead and unselect that option. And like right here, we have a square or a vertical four to five. And a lot of those are the same size, but some of these random ones like the sidebar right here or the right column, like that's kind of a unique size. So I might go ahead and turn that one off just because I don't feel like making an image in that particular size. So that's how I do it is based off of the size and if I have content in the appropriate size. And so Facebook right column in this case, I don't have that size so I wouldn't advertise there. Same concept with stories and reels. Like if you don't have an ad that specifically is designed for stories or reels, then I don't recommend advertising there. Like just because Facebook will let you put an image into a reel or a story doesn't mean that it's going to convert. You wanna have created specific ads for specific placements. So if you don't have those specific ads for the specific placements, I would recommend turning them off and not just using whatever Facebook would let you use. And so in my case, I'd probably turn off all stories and reels because I just have an image and I'm not gonna have it designed specifically to be used in a story or a reel. Coming down here, we have in-stream ads for videos and reels. So we can open this up. And in my case, I might have one for Facebook in-stream videos, but I don't have stuff for reels, right? So I'd go ahead and turn those locations off and then search results right here. Let's pop that open and Facebook search results or Instagram search results. And I have images and ads designed specifically for those placements, so I'll leave that on. And then we have apps and sites. And this is the audience network that I'd already turned off. So I'll leave it turned off. Then we have show more options right here. And it lets us select different mobile devices or operating systems. So let's go ahead and click on edit real quick. And so you can see all mobile devices or Android devices or iOS devices only. So if you're advertising an app that is iOS only, well then you probably wanna go ahead and select this option. But I'll leave all mobile devices. Also only when connected to Wi-Fi. I know a lot of people select this option because usually the only time somebody's connected to Wi-Fi is when they're at home, you know, sitting there on their phone, browsing around. And so they're more likely to buy something when they're at home versus when they're, you know, driving in a car or something. So some advertisers like to select this option. However, I usually don't. And I let Facebook's algorithm figure out whether people will buy it when they're not on Wi-Fi. And then we can exclude skippable ads. So available for in-stream videos. So let's click on this. So if you don't want your ads to be able to be skipped, you would click this don't include skippable ads in this ad set, but usually doing this costs more. And there are other restrictions as well. Like I think the length of time for your ad can only be 15 seconds. So I never select this option. I leave it unchecked all the time. And finally, we get into brand safety and suitability. So you could go ahead and prevent your ads from appearing near content that's not conducive to your brand, so managing brand safety and suitability. So if you wanna limit where your ads are shown or websites that they're shown on or topic type, you can go ahead and select that here. But I'm not gonna go through those options right now because I think they're rarely used. And if you do use them, you can probably figure it out by clicking these edit buttons and everything should be relatively self-explanatory. And so that should cover it for the ad set settings. Again, if you haven't already, please watch a campaign objectives video that I have. Also the saved audiences video, as that'll help you piece everything together. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate it. So likes, comments, subscribes, and or head over to crazyamarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.